about every morning I stand outside in front of school and I greet our community to give the message that we are a welcoming school and welcoming environment and that everyone at the school, including the director, is accessible to the community. Once I came here, um, I fit in immediately. I don't remember a process of not finding friends or anything like that because the community seems to embrace everyone that comes in. Our kids felt welcome and well taken care of and integrated as of the first day of school, even though the hardest book in English. We spend a lot of time at the beginning of every year and then throughout the year um, building community and teaching um, the children and fostering a, a sense of um, community and how do you welcome other people and how do you um, show that you're a good friend and um, developing their empathy and their compassion. The young children who are coming in, they're in a classroom that's bright and cheerful. Um, they're with adults that can um, encourage them and support them. It's very important that the school provides a nurturing, supportive environment. You cannot learn well if you don't feel safe and supported. I mean, the kids do love coming here. They feel safe. This is where they want to be. We start out by assessing the children and figuring out where they are in their learning, and then we build on that learning, helping them to reach the uh, learning outcomes that we expect. They need to be given the chance also to show what they already know. Our children don't come in with nothing, they, they've learnt lots from home already. As children progress through the school, we want them to really take responsibility for their own learning, not because they have to, but because they feel that they want to learn. So there's two parts you can work on. How many minutes is reasonable for this homework? 20. 20. One of the things that makes ISP unique is the attention paid to creating a culture in which students are independent learners, students who take ownership of that learning process. You see it in their science classes, where most of the time you won't see the teacher at the head of the classroom giving a lecture. You'll see students doing things. When you just read it, it's not so interesting, I guess. With the red button, you're going to press there, then you're going to start talking. We're very excited about the school mission. In, in, in its essence, it's about inspiring, engaging, and empowering students. But the mission, which was created by the school community, was a process that really put into words in a cogent way what we think is most important about ISP. The truth is human beings learn naturally anyway. We all, we're, we're, we're born to learn, that's what we do. And schools, in some ways, get in the way of that if you're not careful. So wherever we can within our school, we try and keep that natural curiosity open. The students realize that they used observation or they had to concentrate or they had to use common sense and students began to realize, wow, these skills I actually use in my, in my real life. Our curriculum is inquiry-based, so the students are asking questions, finding answers, they have critical thinking skills, so they can take what they've learned and apply it to a new situation. Uh, it's authentic, so it's always in the context of the real world. Would you like to, if you ever had the opportunity to swim the dolphins? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to swim the tuna? <laughs> So when the students leave, they could go off, let's say, to 52 different countries for universities. So we have to give them skills in which they can go off and use in all those different environments. In most of my classes, every single student is from a different nationality. What I try to do in the art room is get the students to reflect their nationality and their culture in their artwork, because I think this is one of the most exciting things that they have to offer to their art. Sometimes some students will bring a particular perspective because of their own cultural background. And they often make the assumption that other students share that same that background. And it becomes very interesting when two people come to the same problem with a different viewpoint. We meet with the teachers, we review the curriculum. They will take in examples of student learning and see whether they are actually matching what, what we want to deliver. The benchmarks actually are like an unpacking of the standard. They could be performance indicators as well. The teachers are experts within their own subject, so they bring that expertise, but they're also able to see the bigger picture and work collaboratively as a group so that we can bring together learning and make it more holistic for the students as well. 
perhaps the key thing is, is the quality of the teachers that we have. Each year we will have over a thousand applicants for a handful of positions, so we're in a very good position to be able to look for the very, very best teachers. Our teachers bring with them uh, this kind of dedication and excitement about working with young people. I really enjoy um, helping kids achieve what they can, and I just love being around them and seeing, watching their minds grow and watching them grow as people. Research tells us that the relationship between a teacher and student is the most powerful indicator of student uh, progress and student achievement. Here I can teach a student uh, in the last period of the day and then half an hour later he's in my football team and we're playing football outside. On a Saturday we're doing community service or, or charity stuff for the school and that same student comes along to contribute and then you see them on stage. Uh, so it's such a diverse community with so many different things going on that you really get to know kids in, in in multiple ways. There's the continuity from school to home. So I think, you know, the communication is there. They're very friendly as well. So I think you see them in, at the events. So you can see them as teachers, but also, you know, great people to talk to that are from everywhere. Our message to the parent community is that they are partners in their children's learning and in their children's education, which is why it is not unusual throughout the day to see parents in the cafeteria having coffee or talking to one another or interacting with our faculty. We have parents coming to workshops where our technology department talks to them about what's Facebook, how are your children using these different kinds of social media? It, it's really starting a conversation that parents and students can then have on how are we going to manage these tools as a family. When is it meaningful to use technology tools and when is it meaningful to turn them off? You know, if you're using a tool, how is that enhancing your learning? And if it isn't, then don't use it. Technology is there to support the learning. So we brought the technology inside of the classroom and that's why we got rid of the computer lab and that's why we only have laptops and iPads in classrooms. When the students need them, they can just take them out, they can just use them. With mobile technology, we're customizing the learning. What the individual needs to do with the technology, they can do with their own time. Technology is a tool that's part of the day and I think as a school we need to replicate that. Students are completely involved with technology outside of school. And we want to make sure that when they come to school, they understand the correct ways to use technology and how to use it responsibly. This school has done a really good job of understanding the times and harnessing it. students uh, to adapt to our changing world and Mandarin Chinese is the most widely spoken language on the planet. Because of, it's such a visual language, it lends itself visual uh, tools like mind maps where students can draw pictures to remind themselves of what the different parts of characters are in order to learn hundreds of characters. In terms of the activities, we, we talk about uh, healthy and active, and not just uh, physically healthy, I think socially healthy, for our students to be a part of something. And the level they play at, it really is not important. I think what's, what's important, that we're able to give them an opportunity to take part in whatever activity they want to do at their level. Students will get a chance season one to take part in cross-country football or tennis. Season two, we move to swimming and then basketball and season three, volleyball or softball. There are a lot of competitions around Europe that we participate in. For the most part, it's the CISA conferences that we attend. Um, so I've had the opportunity to go to like Turkey and Romania and Estonia and Latvia, Luxembourg. I've traveled to Kiev, Moscow, uh, Doha, uh, Qatar, uh, Cairo and Egypt. And I think it's a really great experience to have when you go to these different places. And also you get to uh, know your classmates a little bit better on these sports teams as well. I have four children, so I have to, you know, be wise choosing uh, school, and obviously, ISP really offers everything.
they have to choose the instrument that they feel will be best for them, what does the sound attracts them, and at the end of the day, they're usually pretty happy with the instrument they've chosen, and they're just so excited to get their hands on an instrument and try playing it. They're learning that um, they're a part of something bigger every time they play their instrument in a group, in an ensemble. Before they sign up for IV, before they sign up for classes, their counselor sits down with them, I sit down with them, and we talk about what their goals and needs are, and then we, we choose a program for them that fits them best. It's all about uh, saying your opinion about something and being able to express it and write it down and talk about it and it it really does teach you how to how to speak for yourself the students aren't just learning a whole bunch of content that they have to spit back they're really learning how to filter and evaluate knowledge and how to apply it to new situations. Why do we have technology? Uh, we have opposing thumbs. <laughs> we have opposing thumbs, which has given us the ability to grasp things and use tools. And we're not the only ones. Primates are also the ones, but primates have technology. I love the IB program. I think it's fantastic because it really tries to um, it tries to have students be really well-rounded in a lot of facets, so it's not just academic, you also have to do CAS, which means that you have to be involved with your community, you have to be active and do sports, and you have to be creative as well. What's important is that students become aware of their own style of learning, their own strengths and their own weaknesses. We're not always going to be there for them. Our goal is that they become real lifelong learners. We are preparing them uh, to be adaptive, to be able to adapt to a changing world, but also to be responsible global citizens. We want our students to be able to leave ISP and contribute to the world. Not simply do well, but also to do good. My own children are happy, they're growing, they're developing, they're learning, they have an amazing life. If you come to ISP, you're going to leave here a little bit of a different person, and it's going to be for the better. The product it's really outstanding.